right, this is how you draw and understand a Bohr model or diagram. So you're given an element, nitrogen. The first thing you need to know before drawing a Bohr model or diagram is how many protons, neutrons, and electrons do you have? Well, the seven for the atomic number tells you you have seven protons. You, to get the neutrons, you take your atomic mass or weight and subtract away your protons. So 14, you can round down 14, Minus 7 will give you 7 neutrons. And for this class, and for most chemistry that's not I or, uh, ions, the number of protons will equal the number of electrons, which in this case is also 7. So to draw the diagram, we're going to start off with the nucleus. In the middle, we're going to put, for a simplified diagram, P7 and 7 for protons and neutrons. All right. I'll show you a different way to do it a little bit later. So we have the nucleus, now we need the electrons. So first, we're gonna start with an outer shell. Well, our only shell so far. For that shell, we've got two electrons maximum. So the first shell can only hold two, and our two electrons, but we still need five more because we have seven electrons total. So we draw another shell, now that this is our valence shell, and we need to fill in the extra five. This one can hold eight electrons, so one, Two, three, four, and five. So we have our seven total electrons, two in the inside shell, five in the outside shell, and our Bohr model is done. Now this isn't the only way to do it. Here is another example of a bohr rutherford diagram. And instead of just writing protons and neutrons in the center, I've actually drawn the protons with a little positive, neutrons with a circle. You'll notice electrons are the same, two shells, two in the inside, five in the outside. And that's drawing a Bohr model.